with our video from Auto Guys Life, and here is the new car. It is a 2013, just a minute, 2013 Mustang 3.7 litre V6. It's the facelift model, so it has the little track apps and all the rest of it. We'll get to that in a minute. And unfortunately, it's not without its problems, of course. As you can see, we have all the back seats and the convertible turfed out here, which I'll just explain because we have a leak. So a lovely car, drove it 500 miles to get home from a dealership down in Devon. I'd ask if it had any water ingress in the boot and they said no, but it clearly did because <coughs> we've had to take the back seats out and the trunk lining and the wood panelling for the floor is actually over there, which was covered in mould, as was the bottom of this, covered in mould. Um, all the carpets come out of it as well, and I'll show you exactly what is going on. So, what I noticed with the car was that when I was taking stuff in and out of the trunk, I noticed a drip of water. Why am I going back and forth? I'm looking for the keys. Here we are. There we go. And a drip of water was coming in from the trunk. First of all, it was coming in from there, which is a guide pin for the bumper. And from there, another guide pin for the bumper. As you can see, I've RTV'd it, so I can seal it, and that's good. Then I noticed it was coming in from this hole here, and this one with the kind of white sealant on it and the same one the other side so check the drains here everything's fine poured water in here everything was fine took these little caps off poured water in here everything was fine poured water down here and everything started to leak and the water does go in there and it does collect in a trough which I'll just show you but the culprit of the leak is that seam right there, which has just started to stretch a little bit. So I'll show you as best I can. These can leak in umpteen places, but you buy from a dealership, you don't really expect to have to do this straight away. So, no signs of water ingress, they said. Look at the mold on the carpet there, look at that. I'm gonna have to clean all that. I'm going to have to clean all this because it's been leaking down here. Dry it all out first, of course. And it was leaking down into the backs of the passenger, the back seats. Right, so what we've worked out is if you lift up all the foam, water was getting in here and leaking down that hole and that hole and that one there. Right, and what happens is, see the black weather strip? Behind that is a trough that the convertible top is designed to drip water into that trough and it runs down the front here and goes out the bottom of the car and um, between the wheels. And it, it's like a sunroof, it's meant to drip in there. It's meant to collect water from there. So there's a trough there, right? There's a drain hole there as well, see it? And then it drips down here. Now the first thing that was going wrong was this flap, this black flap of canvas was curled round like a U-shape to the point that the water was dripping onto that and overshooting the trough and you can see where it's been dripping there. So I've just stuck it back with a magnet to test it and see if it drips straight down, which it now does. And similar with that one there, it's dripping down as well. Stuck a little magnet on the canvas and it seems to be okay. It's exactly the same on the other side. So the other side's fine, dry as a bone, when you do the water now. But this side, and I poured water onto the, the, the convertible top from the outside, obviously, it was still dripping. And you can see where it's been dripping there. See that? And it's because this seal, I don't know if you can see daylight. See daylight there? This seam on the outside is just starting to part ways and it's letting enough daylight through for it to drip inside the car, ruin your life, ruin your convertible experience. 
and basically cheese you off to the point you have to fix it. So what I've ordered is some silicon, some um, convertible top glue, which I'll get off Amazon. I'll leave the link down below and I'll pick this video up when that glue arrives. And we're gonna, I'm gonna actually patch it up from the inside here as well and put some glue on the outside and then retest it. And if this bit remains dry, we're good to go. You can see how wet it's got there, right? I've been testing it for quite some time and it's soaked the place. The foam is soaking and yeah, I know we're, we're an automotive channel that fixes stuff and I did buy this car from a dealer with the hope that I could just start modifying it straight away. But maintenance comes first, doesn't it? And especially when you've got a water leak like this. So, yeah, not the best start. Oops. Sorry, I dropped the phone there. Not the best start, but anyway, it is what it is. So, I'm going to show you around the rest of the car in the next video because there is quite a few things that I want to repair. Steering wheel, for one thing. I've just done some patch jobs on it with some leather paint and whatnot. But there's quite a few things. The seats are worse for wear. And I want to swap out the leather door cards for something a bit more colourful and get some custom leather covers made for the centre console and the, the brake, handbrake boot and stuff like that. So, um, plus we've got some carbon fibre bits coming. But anyway, that leak is extremely irritating. And I'm going to email the dealer back and just say, you know, it's, I've had the car for a couple of days now and I could... You could hear the water dripping into it as it was raining the way home. I drove it 500 miles in one go. Only stopped twice for fuel and something to eat. But anyway, the dealership was very nice. Hopefully they'll, they'll come back to me with a, a wee apology or something like that. But I can't exactly take it back to them to fix it. So here we go. We're fixing it ourselves. But I've never had a soft top before. This is the first one. And these are the problems you've got to expect. This car is only 10 years old. Anyone that's followed this channel will know my last cars were a lot older than this. One was a hard top convertible Mercedes SL and the Dodge Charger was 18 years old as well. So anyway, it is what it is. So pick this up when I get the sealant of the glue and then we'll see how that repair goes. So I think that black thing was hanging over the lip of this trough and all that water was running onto it and running into the trough but now we're okay and I think that's pretty normal for a convertible because a sunroof works in the same way so I think we're okay yeah there's water coming in at the back there but I'm guessing it should be doing that because this trough behind here is designed to take some but that is quite a lot. Now, it's overflowing because it's dripping from here. Okay, Bob, that's fine. Thank you. And it's coming from there. Let's see. See that? So it's dripping all the way here. Right, okay. But today, we also got courtesy of Ayrshire locksmiths two brand new factory style keys cut and coded and both of them open close the car double tap for the the boot trunk works no problem which is excellent and it wasn't too expensive either and the guy came to the house and did it at the house and this is so much better than the rubbish key that I had, so. But we're going to try and fix the top with this. The Storm Sure soft top repair kit. And what it comes with is glue, which is the main bit that we'll be needing. But also some patches that are good for taping up on the inside of the, the hood. Inside of the, the roof, I should say. Ah, one-handed. Hold on. And we've got some tape here that I might try on the inside. Uh, that's just a circular, couple of circular patches which are far too big, but you can cut them to size obviously, so we'll see. Gloves which we'll, we'll use, my own ones. And that's the glue, so 
it is flexible repair adhesive, so it should be able to cope with the roof going up and down. Although, you can see here the seam is starting to come away on this side as well. It's not actually leaking on this side, but the same is happening on that side. And we're going to be patching this up with the Storm Sure glue from the inside first. And I'll put some bits into the, the seams here. Now when that goes down, that'll obviously compress a bit. So this is it in its fully stretched state. So I'm going to do it while it's like this. So that when it goes down, it will compress it a little bit. And we'll see how we go on with that. And then we'll take it outside and we'll do some water tests on it. Okay, so this is the offending area. And the bit that I'm going to have to touch up with the glue... And what I'm not sure of is how far it goes down in terms of the split, but the main bit is definitely there. You can see it is wider there than it is along here. And that's where the water's coming in for sure. It is designed to drip down here and go into that trough. You can just see the back of the trough there. And there are some drain holes and stuff that the trough has that will take it down right in the front of the car. But it's getting in here and soaking the place, so let's give that a shot. Okay, so what I've done here is, along this seam, I've just applied some of the tough tape. It doesn't look the nicest, but it'll be completely covered with this um, foam pad anyway like that, so you're not going to see it. So I wasn't really fussed about making it as invisible as I could. This is just to act as a backing so that when I put the glue on the outside, it's got something to stick to. So I've got two layers of this tough tape on this seam here, and that's where the water was coming in, right there. I'm not, I've went up as far as I could without removing this, but I will um, glue it on the outside now. So let's see how that holds up. I mean, this tape, it is pretty strong stuff, it is sticking to this. I did give it a good clean before I did that, so let's see how this holds up. We'll try the glue on the outside. All right, so what I've done is, Quite a little tube of glue, put a bead along the seam there and just smeared it in like silicon sealant with my glove and then put another wee bead on top and as you can see I stopped there just to show you the difference. So there's where I've put the, the glue and there's where it stops. So you can see it's practically filled in the seam. It, it is looking pretty wet just now because I've literally just applied it so I'm going to come back in a couple of hours time or probably just leave it overnight actually come back in the morning and see what it looks like to be brutally honest I don't really care what it looks like as long as it stops the leak because it's such a small inconspicuous area of the trunk it doesn't really bother me but I will make it look as good as we possibly can I need to clean this glass as well it's pretty murky so alright so it's the next day Next night, about 24 hours later, and the stuff has completely dried. Still does look a bit shiny, but I'm going to cover this with some coating, the whole um, canvas top, so hopefully I'll be able to blend it in. But it feels like rubber. It feels rubbery and, and as if it's definitely going to block the, the gap. You can see it a lot more now, so I've got the light shining on it, but when I put the top up, I'm not really that fussed, to be brutally honest. I don't really care. As long as it stops the water, I can get some colourant and some roof colourant later on and put it over it and see if that takes care of the colour mismatch, but it's not too bad. When you're standing here, it just looks like another seam. You can actually get this stuff in black, so I'm not sure how that would have looked. It might have been better for me to get the black stuff and put it over the, the top of that, but I'm going to coat this roof and, and give it some colouring as well, so that will probably cover that up. But to be honest, that isn't too bad. I'm happy with that. If it works, let's go and test it. Like in the new garage, eh? Check it out. Space up there for this car's picture. We've got our Steve McQueen bullet cars shelf and poster. Nice 66 Mustang there done up. A couple of Dodge stuff things over there. And all my signs are up now. Pretty cool, eh? Place is a bit of a mess because I've got half the car sitting here. Once I've got it tidied up, it'll look a lot better and I'll have double B. Harley Davidson sign up there. Maybe a little guess as to what's going into this bay next. So let's crack on with this repair and see how we go on. Oh. 
dry, dry, dry. That's remnants of water spots from the last time we did this. At the moment, we are good here. So let's check underneath here. Let's see what's happening under here. Oh my goodness, are we dry? I think the answer is yes. Oh my goodness, I need five hands to do this job. Let's see. Oh, no water droplets whatsoever. Could we have solved this little mystery? That is bone dry in there now. Now you saw the videos that happened before, this was soaking in here. By Joe, I think we've cracked it. All right, so that is the roof repair and trunk leak fixed. The trunk leak was coming from that roof leak originally, so um, it's all sorted now and it's all dry and I put everything back in. And the car is now watertight, or as best as I can do. And we'll give it some more tests. It's actually really nice weather this week, so I'm gonna get the top down and get out some driving and get some nice shots. But that is us, and the next video, I'm gonna be doing a bit of a steering wheel restoration job because my buttons on the left side of the wheel that navigate the little screen inside the car are broken. I can't go back and I can't go down, so I can't use any of the apps or anything. And the steering wheel itself is looking very tatty. It needs some paint work, it needs the trim redone, and it needs a new leather cover. So we'll pick that up in the next video. But for now, this one has been successful. So thanks for watching, hit subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.